Welcome to the ETG, an electronic troubleshooting guide for anyone interested in electronics, hosted by Mark Christopher. Hi, I'm Mark Christopher, and this is the ETG. Today we're going to cover res resistance isolation process. And to introduce that uh, concept, uh, I have Chuck White. This is Chuck White. Hi, Chuck. How are you doing? Well, this is a technique that was shown to me 30 years ago, and it um, comes about because we have digital voltmeters that can actually measure pretty low resistance. Most people, when they come across a short and they see it on their voltmeter, it says 0.2 ohms, 0.3 ohms, typically what your re lead resistances are in your voltmeter. They think, oh, there's a short, and they're lost. They don't know where to go from there, and they don't realize that the voltmeter can actually pinpoint that short uh, strictly by measuring the resistance. Uh, you've got to get to the concept that uh, there is a difference between 0.2 ohms and 0.18 and 0.17 and all of those can pinpoint you right down to where your short is. So what we have here is a board and uh, on this board it's been shown that the output of an op amp is shorted to the negative rail. Uh, we know it's not the op amp in this case because the negative rail of the op amp is actually isolated through a 10 ohm resistor. If I had seen 10 ohms, I would have looked immediately at the op amp. But having a short straight to the negative rail, uh, where the op amp is isolated or buffered, uh, we know then that there is a short somewhere other than the op amp. And so I'm going to begin by uh, actually looking at the four points that are actually uh, connected to that output and we're going to find out which component actually has the least resistance. Seems to have a little bit of uh, a feature where I can actually zero out the uh, leads. Uh, if your voltmeter is of a cheaper nature and you can't do that, you have to use a bit of your memory to, to keep memorizing where the lowest point is. So I'm going to go straight to um, short my two leads out. Okay, you can see I have 0.1 ohms with my lead shorted out. And I'm going to go over there and just zero that right out. So that I know I'm operating from there. So one of my first points is C11. And if I go straight to the pad of C11, I see I have about 0.09 ohms. Which means that's actually what the trace resistance is. We're actually looking at the traces. Um, C11, C34 and C34, which happens to not even be on the board. But I go there and I got 0 0.10, so that's a little higher than C11. I can go back and check C11 real quick to verify that. And C11 is pointing right about 0 0.09. One more point uh, to check here would be R36. And if I go to R36, Give it a few seconds, 10, 11. That's actually a higher resistance. So, so far C11 is our low point. And for the output of the op amp, I have to flip this over and see uh, that there, pin six of the op amp. And 11, and that seems to be 10, 11. So it looks like C11 was our, our low point. So I'm going to start by inspecting right there at C11 and see if I can see what's going on here. Of course at my age I'll need an eye loop. Huh? And I see there C11 goes to a via and the other side of the via is under the chip where you can't see it. Okay, I'm going to put my probe right on the via itself. The V is at 11, C11 is 10, and so the V is actually further away, which is interesting. So if it's further away, then you're suggesting that it's not maybe it's inside not, the board. It's not, yeah. It's I'm, not in that via. It's not in the via itself. Oh, wait a minute, right there. 10 right there. And why does
right next to right next to the via itself and that was close on the via I was a little fooled by that but I can actually see a small trace which shouldn't be there uh, where they had bad etching and it's leading from the edge of the via over to R43 which happens to actually go to the negative rail and now, can you prove that by bringing your leads to that those two points? Yeah, we can take and actually put. Let's use the other probe because I get a nice point. So this is where I believe the point is shorted, and you can see that is uh, about point one one away from the point that I was measuring before. And so if I go to C11, I'm seeing O3, I go to that via, and that's O3 as well. So we're down to where a very short piece of, uh, short piece of trace that actually can't be measured with this particular range, but we're really, that's we're really down there. It's, it's right there, O2. So you're, you're looking at an area less than what, sixteenth of an inch? Sixteenth of an inch, and it's, it's right in there. Let's get an exacto blade, because that, that's actual trace in there. I, I believe I've cut that spurious trace, and we go back to C11. And we're there. We don't have we're up to half a mega ohm now. So that was it. There was a small unetched piece of copper that uh, was shorting that edge of the via over to R43, which was connected to the negative five volts. Now this technique of course, this was a rather small area with a small thing, but this technique is really good if you're doing digital and you have a short of the 5 volt bus to ground and you have 30, 40 chips. You can literally go across each one of those chips and find the minimum point. And once you find the minimum point, you can either check that chip or look around that chip. Perhaps one of the bypass caps are there. You can check those as well. But you can literally find a short by using the resistance of the trace itself to locate the uh, minimum resistance point. <laughs> to summarize this, essentially what you want to do is first start by zeroing out your leads. Uh, if you don't have the capability to zero them, just hold the two leads together and note that value, the minimum value. And then uh, go around the board and locate the um, minimum resistance and when you locate the minimum resistance you're pretty well close to where your short is at. Components can be shorted, traces can be shorted, you can have solder bridges, uh, there are many things that can cause a short um, but once you get to the right area uh, you can do a visual inspection and find many times traces and solder bridges or if it's a component you can actually find that actual component that's shorted because it will have the least resistance. Well, thank you. Chuck? No problem. And happy troubleshooting. This has been the ETG. I'm your host, Mark Christopher. Good night.